Entrepreneurial Edge is brought to you by Business Banking from FNB. Because small ideas can lead to big business. FNB, how can we help you? Hello and welcome to the Entrepreneurial Edge, the show that takes us inside the minds of people who've made their own way and their own money in this world. I'm Chris Bishop. This week, an entrepreneur that came up the hard way. Now, you've heard a lot about MBAs and business degrees from the entrepreneurs who've appeared on this program down the years. This week's guest grew up barefoot around the mountains of Limpopo in the northern regions of South Africa. We welcome Tim Tabela, a man who started work at the age of nine and fought his way up from working as a gardener to become one of the richest men in Limpopo with a string of businesses from construction to coal. Welcome to the show, Tim. So when you, you started out as a child, how tough was tough? It was very, very tough. It was tough in a sense that um, obviously the first thing is cooling. Going to school was, was, was quite distance. It was quite far away. And uh, we will wake up in the morning, in winter especially, you have to make sure that you wake up early to join the group that is going to school because we're going like, we're, we're, we're walking to school by group. And if the, if, the, if the group miss you, it means you're not going to school. When it comes to this kind of hardship and discipline early on in your lives, what bearing do you think has that got on you, making you an entrepreneur? Basically, uh, well, it has a lot of bearings on me to block, especially when it comes to the, to the rights of acquiring a better education. That was, that was a bearing, a student's bearing. Obviously, I'll always say, think that if I was privileged and, uh, and, and, and be born in, in a good environment, I would have been a better entrepreneur by getting a better education uh, at the right times and uh, at, the, at, at, at the right place. So you don't believe this, this idea that, uh, that the hardship makes people stronger and tougher and more they, steel? They, they do. The hardships, <coughs> they always make people to be very strong. Uh, but uh, it must be coupled with something else. You can't just be having the hardships and not do anything that, 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 uh, that will determ determine your, your better future. So it, it does in any way. What do you think made you an entrepreneur? What makes me an entrepreneur <coughs> is an <coughs> entrepreneur. <coughs> it's a different thing altogether. It's a different animal. Entrepreneur, remember, it's a, it's a, it's a skill. It is a kind of an enemy born kind of a skill. You're born with that. It's not like uh, you can, yes, you can go and to, to school and learn to become an entrepreneur. But yes, when you go and learn to become an entrepreneur, you're not necessarily learning uh, from zero point. You learn from, from, from what is in you. It's like, a, it's like a career. It's like what? It's like, a, it's like an artist. You're born being an artist, but you go to school to learn to become an artist. One of the great arguments we have on this show is, are entrepreneurs born or are they made? They are born entrepreneurs. Born. And they are, they are strengthened by being made, but they are born. How did you turn your first rand in South Africa? How did you make your first rand? My first rand? First rand off your own bat. <coughs> My first, you took about one rand. Yeah. My first rand was, uh, I made it by, by selling. By selling apples, by selling, and I was selling, selling apples, I was selling peanuts, basically. And I would send somebody to, to, to go to town because it was about 200 kilometers away from where I was staying to the nearest town in Petersburg. It was then, it was Petersburg then, now it's called Polokwane. Um, the guy will go uh, in the morning because it's just his normal way, it's this bus driver. Then he come, comes in the afternoon. And then brings me some apples, then I, I sell them. Then I made my first one rand. So at that time, I was very young. Obviously, I was at the age of between 9, 10, 11, and then uh, trying to make my ends meet. And just paint us a little picture of uh, Limpopo province back in the day. I mean, I read somewhere that you used to sleep in the mountains because you were afraid of arrest. Yeah, that was the only place to just save for me. Why was that? Staying at home, sleeping at home was an extremely unsafe situation to, to be. At that time, we, it was during the time of the, of the unrest, the time where the, 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 the liberation struggle was at, at, at the highest of its peak. And I was playing a role as a leader of, of, the, of, the, youth, of the youth movement at that time. 
and uh, there was no way I could have stayed at home. Staying at home, it was just a, a problem. Well, I, I tried one day to stay at home and I was arrested. How difficult did it make that in your plans to be an entrepreneur? It's so difficult because remember, you still have to go to school. You, you, stay, you, you sleep on the mountain, you are facing every kind of movement in the night. Obviously, all the lights you can see from a distance and you won't sleep. You're awake the whole night. In the morning, you go down the, mount you go down the mountain, you go t to a house, you go and take a bath, and then you go to school. Obviously, concentration at, in, at last, it won't be there. And uh, you, you end up not doing well at school because you just don't concentrate because you didn't sleep. Yeah. Now, we skipped forward in the years now. You went to college, you got a degree. Yes. You came out and you became a teacher. I became a teacher in, in, the, the, yeah, in, 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 in township. Hien Hauti, because I was banned to become a teacher in my own province in Limpopo. Not Limpopo that time, but it was Limua government. And what were you teaching? And I was teaching, well, the, well I'm, I'm a religious person, I was teaching mostly the biblical studies. And so uh, during that time, what made you think then I want to resign and start as an entrepreneur? I, I resigned becoming an entrepreneur uh, through the pressure because it was not necessarily that I just chose to become an, a, an entrepreneur and, and just go and, and, be, and be a businessman. I had a big pressure. My pressure was simple, was that, uh, because I was, I, was I was a trade unionist. And then I had a lot of contact, contacts in terms of dealing with people and all sort of things. And then, uh, well, some other uh, business people identified me. They looked at me as if this guy has got the potential to become a businessman. They identified me. They said, look, can you join us in this insurance industry? I said, no, well, with pleasure, but with pleasure. But uh, what is that? I said, no, look, you can make so much money. I said, no, I don't believe this money because I know how much I was earning. I was earning far, far much less, but I thought I was earning a lot of money because that's the only money I knew. I knew. But then when I realized that I could, I could make a lot of money, and then I joined them part-time, and I, I made a lot of money by, by being a part-time. I mean, my salary was huge, and uh, more than 20 times what I was earning on a full-time basis. And that was the what moved me out of my formal employment of being a teacher and to go and be full-time in, in, in the insurance industry. And then when I was in the insurance industry, I realized that, you know what? There's a lot of market that you can also establish to enhance and, and advance this insurance business because obviously the market, that time, the big insurance companies were focusing more on insuring the, the so-called uh, the middle age groups, believing that they, this will, will live longer and as a result, they developed the, the, the policy of the product which was, ex which was excluding the, the pensioners or those above 55 years and 70 years. And in my entrepreneurship came in and I realized, look, you know what? I think that the strong market, basically, it is not this one that we're concentrating on on a daily basis. Those that die a lot are the younger generations and those that live longer are the older generations. And that thing, it, t it takes long. Uh, to get into the minds of big companies like Salams, like Old Mushuaras, they believed I'm just a dreamer. How exciting was it in those first days when you realized I got something that was going to make money? I said, no, but this is not, I'm not a dreamer. Basically, uh, I, I, I did that, that product and I became, we became the, the, the biggest uh, brokerage firm in the country by insuring the pensioners. And how? And now the, the same companies that they refused to underwrite me to, to, uh, to uh, yes, they came in now to look, Tim, now we can work together. It's now approved in the whole country as the best scheme. What difficulties, uh, difficulties did you have in those days when you were trying to build up the business and employing people? What were, what were your worst days? Well, uh, it was difficult because uh, so firstly you have to be able to identify the, those that drive the same passion as you. It wasn't easy to get the very same kind of people that can drive uh, your passion. It was so difficult. And what sort of inspiration did you get in those early days when you're building up your first businesses? The inspirations. Yeah. The is, well, the, my inspiration has been always developed from from different uh, from different uh, corners. Uh, obviously, there will be those people that inspires me uh, from the same kind of ranks, and then also also knowing where I come from to say, look, if I don't get self motivated, I will stay where I, well, I will stay where I am and I'll go back to where I, where I am, where I, where, I, where I was before. So the only way not to go back is to do what is difficult and to push for my, for my business to strive and, and, and be a better person t in future. How much of entrepreneurialism do you think is fear and how much of it is inspiration? 
entrepreneur, I don't think there is any fear that they don't have fear as entrepreneurs. I don't have fear. I'm sure you don't. A lot of entrepreneurs that they say, oh, you know, I, I fear being left on the shelf. I fear that I will end up destitute. The entrepreneur, it's, it's, they, they, they love taking chances. So I've got no problem of, of failing in any, in any ventures. In all my four, three ventures that I was in, none of them failed. The first was, was, was insurance brokerage. It became the successful uh, business in the, whole, in, the whole, uh, of the, in the whole country. And the second became the construction. It became the most successful company in the whole, again, in the whole of my small province. But then the last one became, it became the, the mining uh, business, which is the most uh, successful uh, business as of today. So, so what would whatever you I chose to participate in, my passion, or my whatever, yes, whatever dr that drove me always became a success with no fear. What would you say to a would-be entrepreneur sitting out there watching, listening yeah. to you now, what would you say to them about to get them into uh, the idea of being an entrepreneur? No, what, what I would say to him, to the person that uh, listen all the time to your, to your instinct or listen to your heart all the time, because most of the times uh, people, they've got dreams and they don't believe in their dreams. And I would just say to them, please believe in your dream. That dream is the same dream that Joseph in the Bible dreamt. And Joseph believed in that dream and he became the governor of Egypt. So if you believe in that dream, if you believe in that dream, you will succeed. But a dream is not that you must just dream and relax and say, I've dreamed being a multimillionaire. You must do something. It's like a tree. You plant the tree, you have to put some water in it to grow it. The only thing to do, once you dream, work on growing that dream to make it a reality. But believe in that dream. Don't ignore your dream. And you, you have uh, family, children. I have family. And I have how many, are they going to follow you into entrepreneurism, <laughs> you think? <laughs> well, my, 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 what, what do you call it, my, my wish is for them to follow me, to follow um, in my footstep. But they've got their own thinking, they've got their own calling uh, God might decide somehow and say, look, you don't go this direction. Your father was meant to be at this place for this particular reason. You have to be in this place for this particular reason. Everybody is, is placed according to the will of God. And then I cannot say to them, be me. If they, be, if they become me, they might fail because it's not a calling. I'm on my calling. Tintabela, hold that thought there. We're going to go for a quick break now. Don't go away. In the second half, we're going to talk a lot more about how you built your business empire.